Hi everyone, welcome to Madras Croc Park. This is a reptile zoo based in Chennai and I'm Steffi, the education officer here. Uh, we are thrilled to be a part of Natural History Museum and UNDP summer vacation camp and we have a lot of things planned for you. You know, we are a reptile based zoo and we have really cool and fascinating animals which are really waiting for us. We would be seeing them up close and let's just, you know, get this started without wasting any time. is a sub adult you can see this one here and the other one is a juvenile and it shouldn't be more than six months old right now people generally confuse with a turtle and a tortoise right now today we will be learning the difference between the turtle and the tortoise so you would be able to tell anyone who mistakenly calls a turtle a tortoise okay so if you look at them i have them in a bowl so that you can see their webbed feet generally if we take them out they pull their limbs everything inside so it's difficult so they are in the bowl so you can see the webbed feet that they used to use for swimming around you can see the tiny one here using just going around right and take the big guy out right there we go okay so turtles uh, are born with their shell and they die with their shell okay they cannot come out like they show in the cartoons you can see he has pulled his head inside Right? Now the upper part of the shell is called a carapace whereas the lower part of the shell is called a plaston. You can see different colorations here and here. Now interesting fact, as they get matured, the males will have a concave structure like it goes inside okay this part. Reason when they want to mate with a female the concave structure can go fix onto the female shell like that. For the females it's just flat. But that we would get to know only when they get mature, maybe three, four years later, right? When they're born, it's just everyone has it very flat like that. You can, yeah, there we go. You can see the tiny tail here. Look at that. And their legs. Guys, right, something interesting happened right now. So we have, look at that. Oh, this is a uh, baby Indian black pond turtle. And we have another one. Hi. Two of them are newly hatched um, so they're going to a different enclosure where they can you know enjoy have more space more food uh, you know and these guys are very commonly spread throughout India Indian black turtle is found in any water body look at the size of these turtles they're just <laughs> they're just that much they just hatched but as they grow older they can get really big way bigger than my hand size actually and they their shell gets even more darker <laughs> Let's leave them both into their enclosures and go see the 
darkness. There you go. There. Let's see if the bigger one comes out now. <laughs> there. Ah, uh, the head comes out. There we go. Measuring these adult uh, red, critically endangered red crowned roosters, which there were 500 left in the wild, and maybe about 100 in captivity. We've been breeding these guys since 2003. So guys, all this while we had the animal and we, we were, you know, took them out of the enclosure. So this time we are going to get inside an animal's enclosure and that is Shanti Akka, our turtle and tortoise keeper and Akka has something in hand which we would get to see how she feeds and how the uh, enclosure is maintained too. So this enclosure belongs to our Aldabra giant tortoise. We have three of them. You can see all these are ready. This fellow here is Albert and he is Robert and we have a shy girl there, little bird. All these tortoises are around 22 years old, right? And we have their food ready to go here. All these are healthy spinach, beans, they eat a lot of beans. And yeah, you can see them drawn towards us because we they know we have the food right now. Oh, I'm so, this is their stand sort of okay and they place they clean it up and they place the food here hi i know okay and we love look at that chomp 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 so these guys don't have teeth but they have really sharp serrations that can easily get through your skin and now since we saw about the turtles, we're going to see about the tortoise. You see this giant leg? You know, it looks like an elephant leg. You know? And look at the scales that they have. Right? So for the turtles, we saw webbed feet. Right? And for us, the, uh, the tortoise, it's an elephant-shaped leg they have. And if you look at the enclosure all around, you know, uh, it is 90% uh, land and just a little bit of water for them to bathe and drink. That's it. That's all they require. So this is the key difference between a tortoise and a turtle. You have to look at their leg to know their difference. Right? And look at the long neck. These guys have really long neck. And they can take their body inside. And the shell the similar. Even if I keep one finger on them, they can recognize it. And it is made of keratin just like your fingernails and your hair. That's how it is. And these guys can get really big. There are records of them reaching up to 150 years old. And these guys are just 22. Hi. And they feed on fruits, flowers, vegetables. I think if I'm really quiet, you can hear them breathe as well. 
Hi everyone, today we're gonna see our garyas getting fed and we already have this. Akka is ready with the fish. Oh, look at that. So let's just get up yours and see them. And we also have our visitors today at the park who, who will be witnessing the garya feed. So let's just go there. Yeah. Alright, you guys, I hope you enjoyed our garyal feed. Now we have someone really cool here as well, our Asian water monitors. So you guys, the next animal with us is a baby blue tongue skink. His name is Gus, just turned a year old and they are found in Australia and Indonesia just going for the food. And you would have noticed the tongue color is bright blue and they use their tongue to scare predators and they come really close and you can see the way he walks right now, very similar to a snake, right? So when people look them from a further distance, they get confused and they think like, are you a snake, it's snake. And you know, then it turns out to be a skink. They are, uh, you can see big holes on the side of their head and that is their ears. And they have really strong jaws. It can, the bite can be really painful. Now, the scales on their body helps them in protecting. And also they buff themselves up when they feel that they are very threatened, right? And the tail is almost half the size of their body. I know. And look at the way he walks. Whoa.
So you guys, we have a Kuvia's Rock came in in hand. Um, she is about three years old. I'm going to talk about her head, body and tail. All right. You see this part? It's right there. That's her ear. And you can see the big, uh, you know, brown eyes. And at the tip, she has a nostril, you know. So this range is what you would generally see when you see a crab. Just the eyes, the ears and the nostril the outside the water. The rest of the body is completely immersed in water and people get really uh, surprised to see, oh, this is how it is, okay. So now, the second part, the scales on the body. You see, they are like really hard plates that they have. And they are used for two reasons. One, they act like an armor protecting themselves from other predators. And also, these are cold-blooded animals. You know, they have to regulate their own body temperature, which means they act like, you know, for example, having a solar panel on back, you know, that helps them observe the sunlight and regulate their body temperature. That's how it is. And they have the webbed feet that helps them swim better. And their tail is like, you know, a major part for them. They help in swimming, balancing, and even during fight, they whack it really hard. And these scales are really sharp. When they do that, it can really hurt the other animal, right? But now, even though how uh, you know strong and hard they are on the top, the lower side of the body is super soft. So now, let's say, for example, a predator catches them, they flip them and start eating them from the lower part of their body because their teeth can easily go further in. So that's how uh, these guys are built. So pretty amazing. And you see the mouth, the mouth is open. Do you think they have a tongue? So you see the pale whitish yellow color that they have? That is their tongue. It's just that they cannot move like us or the snakes do. They are fixed to their lower jaw. And you cannot see the throat because they have a palatal wall that closes so that even when they have their mouth open in the water, the water doesn't get in. They open it when they have to, uh, you know, feed on something and they don't bite or chew. They just rip it and kind of get it down to their throat. They have really sharp teeth though. Look at that. And strong jaw force interesting thing about the teeth no matter how many times it falls in their lifespan it can replace their teeth throughout right oh look at that next animal we have with us is a baby green anaconda his name is loki he's only two years old and just for two years look at the size of it now, anacondas are the heaviest snake in the world. They can reach up to 250 kilos. Mm. All right, look at the shine that they have on their scales. That's because their scales are really smooth and when the light hits them, it shows that rainbow color on them. All right, if you guys can see the patterns, the black dots on their body, they're very different for every individual, just like our fingerprints, okay? And that's how we ID them in zoo. When we have a lot of snakes, we take a picture of the pattern and we'd be like, okay, this is snake number one, snake number two, and so on and on. Right. And if you see the lower part of their body, they have a different coloration. So look at that. And the scale pattern is also very different at this. So it's from here to there, they look very different. Right? So is that so cool? This is our last animal of our virtual tour. And this is one of my favorite animals too. So let's go and meet a boy Caesar. Hi. Caesar? Yeah. So Caesar is a green iguana. <laughs> Look at him chopping. He feeds on fruits, flowers, and vegetables. Um, you know, interesting thing about them is they have three eyes. Let's see. So the third eye, <laughs> the third eye is right on top of their head, like a small rice grain that helps them to figure out light and shadow like that. Right? And if you look at their spines, it kind of reminds me of Godzilla movie. And it's long tail, really long. They have spines here that helps them to, uh, you know, protect themselves from the predators like a whip and also to balance on tree and swim, right? And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the virtual tour. Caesar is definitely enjoying it. If you guys are visiting Chennai, do drop by Madras Croc Bank. And if you'd like to know more about reptiles, follow our page uh, in Instagram and Facebook, Madras Croc Bank. Thank you.